With every war, there are iconic figures that will be spoken and written about over the following years for their courageous acts, nefarious deeds, and contribution to the success or failure of the conflict. During the Combine's reign of planet Earth, there was one person that worked for both sides, the Combine and humanity. Through her choices, she made great waves in the progress of not only humanity's cause to rid the Combine from the planet, but she also aided the Combine in developing advanced technology that they lacked. Although it would seem that this was simply a manipulative person working for their own selfish desires, there is more to her story. Who was this person? What impact did she have on not only the Combine's control of humanity, but also their fall? And how does her story end? Here we explore, in the lore behind Dr. Judith Mossman. Way before the Combine's invasion of planet Earth, and before the human population knew of the horrors that existed out there in the vast multiverse, humanity thrived. With humanity's thirst to understand and explore the universe around them, the brightest young minds attended the most prestigious schools to not only expand their knowledge of the various scientific branches, but on the other side of this, these institutions searched for those that had a natural talent to understand the complex nature of our reality, where they could then nurture these minds to their full potential. One of these talented individuals was Judith Mossman. Seen as a bright, young research scientist, Judith was predicted to have an astounding career. Aware of her raw talent, Judith applied for a position at the Black Mesa Research Facility, a top secret scientific research complex hidden within the New Mexico desert. Even though the role itself was merely that of a simple research associate, this facility employed some of the best and brightest minds that humanity had, and any that worked here would use Black Mesa's advanced machinery and environment to go on to help in the progress of humanity's exploration, understand the reality around them, and development of technologies. As the Civilian Recruitment Division of the Black Mesa Research Facility looked through the applicants for this role, they came across Judith Mossman's promising application. But shortly after this, they also saw an application from another promising young scientist by the name of Gordon Freeman. Although both of these scientists were rightly qualified for the position and would make a great addition to the Black Mesa research facility, Gordon had something that Judith did not, a personal recommendation from one of the leading scientists currently working at Black Mesa within the Anomalous Materials team. Dr. Isaac Kleiner. To Gordon's luck, he had studied theoretical physics at the Massachusetts Institute for Technology. Over his time there, he had been mentored by Dr. Kleiner, where they had become good friends. And so, after he had graduated and later become tired of the slow research in academic institutions throughout his career, a personal recommendation from Dr. Kleiner gave him that advantage against the other candidates applying for the role where he could actually be at the forefront of cutting-edge science. Due to this advantage, completely out of her control, Judith found herself rejected from this position and would have to find another way to make use of her bright mind. While this would, at this moment, appear to have simply been a setback in her career. This moment had possibly saved her life from a catastrophic incident soon to come that would change the world forever. Having lost out on this position due to actions out of her control and with mysterious entities observing from a distance, it could be speculated that Judith would never have acquired this position as a research associate, no matter how hard she tried. These interdimensional entities simply needed the right man in the wrong place 
to further their secret agenda. On an unknown date during the early 2000s, the science team within the Sector C test labs of the Black Mesa Research Facility prepare for an extremely important experiment, with this one even being micromanaged by the administrator of the research complex, Dr. Wallace Breen. With the scientists having had technological issues throughout the day due to the changes in regular testing parameters, they all felt the pressure to perform. In this experiment, the anomalous materials team had been asked to test a specially acquired crystal sample from another world, Zen. Already running behind with the experiment, the scientists waited for another member of their team to arrive who was running late. Finally arriving, Gordon Freeman put on his hazardous environmental suit and after a quick briefing with his superiors, Dr. Eli Vance and Dr. Isaac Kleiner, Gordon enters the testing chamber. From the control room, the anomalous materials team ask Gordon to activate the giant anti-mass spectrometer a piece of machinery that would use powerful waves of energy to explore the properties of the samples placed into its beam. Moving forward, they ask him to move the Zenian crystal sample, GG-3883, into the beam. Dr. Kleiner's recommendation had got Gordon into this position, and if Gordon had not studied at MIT, this could have very well been Judith Mossman pushing the crystal into the beam. Upon hitting the beam, the Zenian crystal shatters where it floods the chamber and facility with exotic matter triggering a resonance cascade, a cataclysmic quantum event where a hole is ripped in space and time, bridging the innocent human population of planet Earth to another location in the multiverse, the border world of Zen. Over the following hours, planet Earth is ravaged by portal storms as the creatures from this border world land here, leaving the leaders of the planet to attempt to control the new creatures that now attack the population to make way for their new home. Although the scientists of Black Mesa eventually closed the rift between Earth and Zen, the damage had already been done. The Zenian threat had ceased but this whole incident had alerted another alien force of Earth's presence. And now, this planet would have to deal with unforeseen consequences. Having dominated many civilizations across the multiverse up to this point, the Combine Empire gathered what they could from these poor planets. Taking their natural resources and brutally adapting the physiology of the creatures on these planets into objects and new soldiers to fight in their armies, the Combine became stronger with each invasion. During the invasion of planet Earth, they fought with humanity's armies, but the nations of Earth were simply not strong enough to fight back. On the seventh hour of this war, the administrator of the Black Mesa Research Facility, Dr. Wallace Breen, had discovered a way to communicate with the dominating Combine Empire and was given permission by Earth's leaders to surrender on behalf of humanity and in turn, submit to the Combine Empire. With this, those that opposed the Combine were killed or unwillingly experimented on to be assimilated into their armies. Through this chaos, Judith managed to survive the onslaught of Combine soldiers that had invaded the planet, and she, just like many others, bowed down to their new masters. As the years went on, the survivors of the Black Mesa incident slowly formed a resistance network against the Combine Empire in secret. Led mostly by Dr. Eli Vance, he, and a group of scientists and other strong world members set up bases across the wasteland using stolen combine technology to aid them in their endeavors. Although humanity had been controlled by the combine, there were still bright minds that could throw in their knowledge to potentially find a way to defeat the dominating empire and remove their occupation of planet Earth. 
During this time, Judith met Dr. Eli Vance, and then she became a vital member of the resistance. From their meeting, she would help set up a base within a new location just outside of City 17, named Black Mesa East. Using her knowledge of theoretical physics, Judith helped the Resistance with their scientific endeavors. As Eli had been a part of the Anomalous Materials team, he had an idea of how teleportation technology worked, but it was Judith that helped his idea become a reality. While she had not been chosen to work with Eli in Black Mesa before the fall of humanity, it seemed that fate had worked hard to bring them together now. As other scientists constructed their own bases across the wasteland, within City 17, Dr. Isaac Kleiner worked in secret to learn more about the Combine, where he even worked with an ex-Black Mesa security guard that had infiltrated the ranks of the Combine Civil Protection. At this point, the Resistance had built up a network of bases to safely transport refugees from City 17 to Black Mesa East, where they could then either help in the Resistance's fight against the Combine, or live within Ravenholm, a town that the Resistance had taken over. Although this network of bases did its job well, Eli and Isaac still worked on a teleporter that would allow instant teleportation from one base to another, therefore removing the risk of detection of travelling by foot. As Eli's daughter, Alex, grew up, she and Judith formed a tumultuous relationship with one another. With Judith coming off as arrogant, they continuously clashed as time went on. Alex would notice Judith and her father becoming closer, which caused tension in itself, while Judith became frustrated with Alex's recycling and treatment of the limited equipment that the Resistance had risked their lives to acquire. Continuing to dominate over the human population, the Combine searched for ways to improve their own empire. Although they had already taken over countless civilizations over the years, their ability to navigate the multiverse to their standard was still limited. They had developed a method to jump from one universe to another, but they lacked the ability to teleport to a location within one universe, something humanity was close to finishing their development on. Over their time together, Judith and Eli formed an extremely close bond. His research had an extremely promising future for humanity, something Judith believed in completely. At one point during this time, under unknown circumstances, Judith came into contact with Dr. Breen, who had been appointed as Earth's administrator after he had spoken on behalf of humanity during the war. From this, they began a working relationship where he ordered her to spy on resistance developments and activities for the Combine. Together, they formed an agreement in which Wallace promised not to capture or harm Eli. In doing so, his important research and work could continue on without interruption, which the resistance needed. In return, Judith promised to continue to supply information to Wallace and the Combine. Now viewed as a double spy to the Combine, Judith would take the information she had learned from Eli and use it to help develop a form of localized teleportation for the Combine, and likewise use the Combine's scientific information to help construct other technology for the Resistance. Working as a double agent, Judith had to learn to become charming, deflective, and manipulative to acquire the information she needed from both sides of the war. She truly believed in Eli's work and admired his great mind. To remove the Combine from Earth, she just had to play those around her to make it happen. While Wallace did, at this point, have a large amount of power over humanity, even he had to prove his worth to the dominating alien empire, and Eli at this point, was one of Earth's most valuable assets. As the Resistance continued to grow, 
so did the Combine's presence on planet Earth, their knowledge of humanity, and now, with the help of Judith, they could research and even possibly acquire localized teleportation technology. With her help and information, the Combine used Judith's knowledge to begin construction on their own localized teleporter within the prison of Nova Prospect. But, if this were to be successfully completed, the Combine's use for Eli would then potentially be unneeded. Within Black Mesa East and Dr. Kleiner's lab in City 17, Judith, Eli, and Isaac continued to unsuccessfully teleport from one location to another. From one failed experiment after another, they simply continued to work on the issues to find out what was wrong. If this technology were to work, the resistance could thrive, but unknown to the resistance. This knowledge would also be passed to the Combine through Judith. As time passed, both sides used information for their betterment, with Judith caught in the middle. On a regular day within the City 17 train station, Gordon Freeman appeared. Working within Black Mesa East, Judith and Eli received a video call from Dr. Isaac Kleiner's lab within City 17. Here, he shows them the arrival of Gordon Freeman, the man Judith, even to this day, held slight resentment against for taking the job she had applied for 20 years before. As these scientists had worked with Gordon during the resonance cascade, they instantly rekindled their strong bond with him even after all of this time. The last they had seen of him was as he had entered a portal to the border world of Zen with the aim to defeat the Nylanth a ghastly creature holding the connection open between the dimensions. Although the rift between Zen and Earth had closed, Gordon had not returned. Claiming this to be a red letter day, the resistance now had the symbol of revolution, but for Judith, this would make everything a little more complicated. Coming up with a plan to teleport both Gordon and Alex out of City 17 to Black Mesa East, the scientists again attempt to use the teleporters. During Alex's attempt, she successfully materializes on the other side, where she joins Judith and Eli on the monitor. Following on from this, Gordon takes his place on the teleporter, but as a result of Dr. Kleiner's pet headcrab interfering with the process, the teleporter malfunctions and sends Gordon to various locations across the multiverse. For seconds, Gordon appears within Black Mesa East before being pulled into the worst place possible, the office of Wallace Breen. Although they had used this method of teleportation to avoid the Combine becoming aware of Gordon's presence, this process did exactly that, where Gordon materialized for just long enough for Breen to see his face. And then, he alerted the Combine. Aware that Judith and the Resistance had been experimenting with localized teleportation technology, Breen knew that Judith would know something about this. And so, once again, Judith fell into an uncomfortable situation where she had to hold her cover from the resistance. With this failed teleportation attempt, Gordon traveled on foot to Black Mesa East as the Combine viciously pursued him. Although it would have been easy for the Combine to simply take over Black Mesa East and wait for Gordon there, Breen and Judith did agree that Eli's work was worth not interrupting. And with Eli's safety in mind, Judith promised to deliver Gordon directly to Breen when she could. All Breen had to do was wait for Judith's signal. Through Gordon's journey, he works with the many resistance bases of the wasteland, creating many issues for the Combine along the way. With Breen having pressure from the Combine to not only stop Gordon, but also to deliver him, this strain would shortly push him close to breaking his promise with Judith. After arriving at Black Mesa East, Judith officially meets Gordon for the first time. 
letting him know that she knew of him well before the Black Mesa incident. Judith holds her nerve and greets him with excitement and positivity. Regardless of whether her perceived attitude towards him was genuine, her plan to deceive and deliver him to the Combine still remained. After reuniting with Dr. Eli Vance after 20 years, the team now had a new resistance leader and a symbol for their cause. Although she had done everything she could to aid in the development of the technology of this resistance base and truly had Eli's safety at heart, Judith, as the double spy in the room, would have to prepare for her ultimate betrayal and deal with the aftermath of it. With tensions rising between Judith and Alex, Eli suggests Alex show Gordon the zero-point energy field manipulator that he had been working on, and so, the duo leave to play with the gravity gun within the outside scrapyard. In opposition to the plan at hand of waiting for Judith's signal, Breen felt the pressure and fear that Gordon could escape once again just like he had through his journey of City 17. With this in mind, Breen goes ahead and orders a strike on Black Mesa East without Judith's permission. As the Combine units infiltrate the base, Judith watches as Eli is captured, and thus stops the progress of his great scientific work. Although this plan was intended to bring in Gordon, a symbol of revolution, this simple research associate evades the Combine soldiers by travelling through a tunnel into the now abandoned town of Ravenholm, a place of nightmares. Arriving in Nova Prospect with Eli, Judith is set free and continues her work on the Combine's constructed teleporter within the newly developed depot area of the prison. With time on her hands, she continues to work alongside her Combine leaders, simply keeping her head down with the hopes that Eli would not be harmed. Although she had, in essence, betrayed her resistance family, she could not take down the Combine alone. Judith had a plan in mind to take down the Combine, or at least, a prominent member of their empire, but she just needed help. As time went on, Judith became frustrated with not only her treatment in the prison, but also the treatment of Eli, who had been detained in a Combine pod. Breen had promised not to harm him, but his great mind was not being used, and his potential wasted. On a video call with Breen, Judith grows the courage to call him out for his behaviour after he had broken their agreement. While this would have been an empowering moment for Judith, this moment had also been viewed by Gordon and Alex, who had broken into the prison in the hopes to rescue both Eli and Judith from Combine imprisonment. Unaware of her cover having been blown, Judith went back to work on the Combine's teleporter in a lab within the depot. Using her abilities to hack the Combine terminals, Alex locks Judith in her lab where a confrontation was soon to come. As Gordon and Alex unlock the door and enter, Alex confronts Judith with rage. She believed that Judith had been responsible for the capture of her father, but as Judith truly believed her actions to have been best for Eli and his work, she at first pretends to play dumb to her cooperation with the Combine, and later knuckles down on her belief that she had done the right thing by working with the Combine. If she had not cooperated with them, Eli would have been taken even sooner and likely suffered an awful fate. Discovering the teleporter, Judith denies any involvement in its creation, but in her anger, Alex continues to disregard anything that Judith claims. Using her knowledge of the Combine terminals, Judith pulls out Eli's pod from a holding location and brings him to the entanglement device chamber. Still believing her way to be the only way forward, Judith tricks Alex into checking out a system malfunction to get her away from the teleporter. With Alex distracted, 
Judith runs into the teleporter, taking Eli with her as the teleporter charges to send them to the Citadel, where she apologises to Alex and cryptically tells her that this was the only way. On her way up, Judith looks down as Alex and Gordon watch in horror as the teleportation sequence completes, sending them away. Arriving in the Citadel, Judith now understood her calculations to have been correct after a successful teleport, but she later learns of the instability this sequence had caused where it had resulted in the entanglement device exploding shortly after use taking out Nova Prospect with it. Not only had the destruction of the teleporter pushed back the goals of the Combine, but also, with Nova Prospect having been viewed as a Combine stronghold, its destruction had shown the resistance across the wasteland that the Combine were not as indestructible as they had let on. Now, an uprising had begun. Over the next week, Judith stayed within the Citadel, watching each section of the city fall, closer and closer to the Citadel. As she lived within the Citadel, she could watch over Eli to at least make sure he stayed safe out of harm of the fighting going on around them. As the resistance stormed the region around the citadel itself, Gordon made his way inside. Waiting at the top of the citadel, Judith watched as the symbol of revolution arrived, neatly locked inside of a combine transport container. Although Gordon struggled to understand the situation he had found himself in, Judith, at this point, offered him the best words of encouragement that she could. That Breen could not be stopped, and that until he was where Breen wanted him to be, there was nothing he could do. Being pulled into Breen's office, Gordon is reunited with Eli and Alex. As Breen celebrates his victory in acquiring the elusive Gordon Freeman, he mocks his captives as Judith begs him to use this opportunity to bargain the captives for Eli's life so that he could continue with his work. Believing Judith to be capable enough of finishing Eli's research, he disregards her pleas and instead plans to send Eli and Alex to the Combine homeworld. Finally outraged by Breen's foiled promises to protect Eli, Judith takes this opportunity to announce herself as a triple spy. Using Alex's electromagnetic pulse tool, Judith locks the door of the office. In confusion, Wallace asks Judith about what she is doing and she tells him that she is doing what she could never have done alone. Still holding him back with Alex's EMP tool, Judith begins to unlock Gordon's pod, believing that the fall of Breen could make waves for the resistance cause. In response to this, Breen grabs Gordon's overcharged energy field manipulator and without knowledge on how to truly wield it, he stuns his captors and escapes into an elevator. Seeing a new side to Judith, Alex asks Judith to stay with and watch over her father. This moment, at least removing many aspects of the tension in their relationship. Judith had done what she could for the resistance, even if it meant that people saw her as a traitor. As Gordon and Alex chase after Breen, Judith and Eli leave the Citadel together where they head out as far away from City 17 as they can towards the White Forest resistance base in the Outlands to safety. Arriving at White Forest, Judith discovers that the team here had been working on a giant rocket that could, if required, close a super portal if one were to form from the inevitable destruction of the Citadel in City 17. As the scientists here worked on plans to use against the Combine when this were to happen, and with Eli and Isaac communicating with Gordon and Alex who had found themselves just outside of the unstable Citadel, Dr. Arne Magnusson, the leader of this base, asks for Judith's help. He explains that although the rocket was almost ready to go, they lacked a vital piece of information, the Combine Homeworld Portal Code. With this, he asks Judith 
along with a team of Resistance members to travel to the north to retrieve them. Although it is unknown how he had gathered this information, Judith agrees to play her part in this fight against the dominating empire. Arriving in the north, Judith and her team discover the Combine Homeworld portal codes, but not only that, they discover information on a legendary, lost research vessel that had been rumoured to have been created by Aperture Science before the fall of society. Aware of the possibilities and advantages that this piece of technology could give to the Resistance over the Combine, Judith and her team record as much footage of this ship as they can and further plan to go back out into the snowy environment another time to gather more information. Attempting to keep White Forest as informed as possible, the team attempt to record a transmission to send out to them. Within this transmission, they hide the information they had discovered within the data. Unfortunately, during this transmission, the Arctic Resistance Team is attacked by Combine forces. As the Combine then take the transmission and store it in their servers, this footage is later discovered by Gordon and Alex as they attempt to stabilize the core of the Citadel. Escaping to the Outlands and finding the White Forest Resistance base, the Resistance find the secret information hidden within the file and acquire the portal codes required to now close the forming super portal. Judith had completed her task to aid the Resistance, but now her fate had been left unknown. As many events played out after this, the closing of the super portal and the death of Eli Vance. Alex and Gordon would plan to travel to the north to find Judith and hopefully bring her home and hopefully discover the secrets of the Borealis together. With Judith's disappearance and fate unknown, her actions throughout this whole time had seemingly been to be the most vital to the resistance cause. Acting as a triple agent, Judith had placed herself in harm's way in the hope to save humanity from the Combine occupation of planet Earth. Although some members of the Resistance were still unsure on whether Judith Mossman had always been a triple agent or if she had simply changed her allegiance after her cover had been blown, Judith had later made up for her actions after rescuing Alex, Gordon and Eli from the Citadel and furthermore, after agreeing to venture forth into the north to acquire the portal codes. The fate of Judith Mossman is unknown, but her last known actions had shown that she was willing to risk everything for the resistance against the Combine. Were her actions in vain now that the leader of the resistance had been murdered, or would this once again push the resistance to fight on and destroy the Combine. Now, as we did not get a conclusion of the fate of Judith after episode 2, in 2017, Mark Laidlaw, the ex-lead writer for the Half-Life series, released a post on his blog titled Epistle 3, which can easily be read as episode 3. With Half-Life 2 having been planned to have three episodic releases, the third never came. For too many reasons to go into in this brief segment, Episode 3 was never released, and so the fans sadly never got a conclusion to the story. With the posting of Epistle 3, it gave us a slight insight into Mark's, I guess, vision for a game that was never made. In brief, Alex and Gordon travel north and find Judith alive and locked in a cell. Together, they manage to board the Borealis and discover it to have the ability to travel through time and space. With the power of this technology, Judith and Alex argue on what to actually do with the ship, with Eli's last wish having been to have the ship destroyed due to the potential consequences it could bring to humanity. Alex follows in her father's beliefs 
but Judith strongly believes that the Resistance could use the technology on board to help the Resistance against the Combine. In a brief fight, Alex shoots Judith, killing her, dying for the survival of humanity and the Resistance agenda. Epistle 3 is, I guess, considered non-canon, but it does give many fans closure to a story that was never completed. In follow-up tweets, Mark did state that Alex shooting Judith just did not fit well, and so he kind of adapted it to Judith falling into one of the portals that travelled around the ship, where she either died or went somewhere else, I guess. This update seemingly leaving her fate unknown again. Now, this was a very brief overview of Epistle 3, but I did create a whole video visualising the story, which I will pin on the top right now. I will add a link to it in the description too. I just thought I would mention Judith's role in Epistle 3, as it does relate to her character in essence. I know it is not traditional canon, but it did give a lot of fans closure. Moving on to the Half-Life 2 beta or beta, I still don't know how to say that word. In this section, I will just do a brief overview of what changed for Judith's character. In this version, Judith was actually a character called Helena Mossman. On other websites, I have seen her called Elena Mossman. I am pretty sure that Helena is the correct one, so that is what I have gone for. It seems she shared some similarities to Judith, where she would turn out to be a spy working for the beta version of Wallace Breen, in this one named the Consul. Before discovering Helena to be a spy, she is introduced as the director of a resistance base, the Kraken base. Now, the first thing you will notice when you look at her is just how different she looks to the final version we got in our game. And I must say, I prefer this version. The darker makeup and blonde wig does make her look villainous though, and so, the spy bombshell would likely have been seen from a mile away. Sadly, not a lot of information was released about Kraken Base, or how Helena's identity is revealed. What we do know is that she takes part in a failed teleportation sequence, fairly similar to the one we had in Kleiner's lab, and then she survives the destruction of her Kraken Base, and reappears at the end of the game. We know this from the Half-Life 2 beta sound files, we can hear Alex shouting, Let go of me, you bitch, at Mossman. Uh, let go of me, you bitch! These files also connect to the final Citadel scene, suggesting her spy reveal to have been at the end of the game. In this art, we can see Gordon holding a gun at the console as Helena holds Alex in the background. It is interesting that in both versions of the story, Judith was to be a spy that was discovered, at least in our version, we got to see why she made these difficult choices for the betterment of humanity. I am also planning on making a Half-Life 2 beta video. It is coming, I promise. Judith Mossman is one of those characters that you think about from time to time. In my opinion, she did what she could in a tough situation for the Resistance. While it would appear to them that she did change sides to suit herself, when you look at the whole story and the decisions she made, it would appear that she always had a plan. The best example I can think of is when she teleported herself and Eli to the Citadel, claiming it was the only way, so that Gordon and Alex would then make their own way to the Citadel to help her take on Breen. She is a super intelligent person, and I do see the best in her, a great character. As I did with the last episode, I did place a hidden G-Man cameo somewhere in this episode. If you do find him, then comment, rise and shine Mr. Freeman. From the comments of the last video, a lot of you did find him, and I tried to heart as many of those comments as I could, just to confirm you were correct. This is also my first video in 4K. Visuals are always extremely important to me. So after purchasing a 4K monitor, thanks to a suggestion from my friend Wisefish, who also creates lore videos, I thought it was time to make the change. Also, please check out Wisefish, he is a good dude and makes great content. I thought I would mention that Judith does wear a bracelet that has the inscription of progress. I could not find any meaning behind this, but it may simply be something that I have missed. 
I also could not think of anywhere else to place this little nugget of information, so I put it in this section. There is nothing much else to say about Judith. She is a great character, and I'm glad that I'm now to the point where I could showcase her decisions and intelligent nature. This once again just shows how great Valve are at creating characters. That was the lore and story behind the impressive Judith Mossman in Half-Life. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. If you do, you'll get notified when I post new content. As always, interacting in any way with this video will help with the algorithm. So give it a like, give it a dislike, comment anything, and even throw out a share if you want to show your Half-Life friends. If you would like to stay up to date with everything I do outside of YouTube and fancy some behind the scenes content, then go and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. As always, I really appreciate you. Thanks to the old gods. Talos, Detroit, Avi WV, Brunette Janas, Jojo Scotia, Imaginary Holly, Ruba Mendoza, and Putpa. I would also like to thank the Elder Ones tier, Jonas, Lewis, and Queen Avi. Massive thanks, guys. What did you think of this lore? For me, on my first playthrough, I absolutely despised Judith for her betrayal, but after going back and replaying the game, I understand why she did what she did, and now I have a lot of respect for her. What did you think of Judith? Do you think that she was genuinely a good person, and how do you think her story ends? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for Half-Life videos, please let me know. The next few videos I'm thinking about are the Half-Life 2 beta, Raven Home, and Alex. Any suggestions from you guys are welcome. That was everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Now combine unit, enjoy your day, and hit that beating quota. Bye.